Louis Pasteur. Let's read about Louis Pasteur and how he saved his country and helped them recover from losses with his findings. This story begins in a small town called Arbois in France. This town was not different from the other small towns around the world. There was nothing special about this town. It would have passed unremembered into the annals of history. But for one single fact that Louis Pasteur lived in this town during his childhood. In this town, there was a main street which was lined with shops. Two of these shops, the blacksmiths and a pharmacist's, were particularly significant. These two shops influenced and laid the foundation for the future of Louis Pasteur. The townsmen often found young Louis on this street. Children of Louis's age spent their time playing, but Louis was interested in something else. Like most children of his age, they often become bored with things and need something new every day to keep themselves engaged. But for Louis, there was nothing more interesting and more important than watching the pharmacist make medicines. Louis would spend hours watching the pharmacist run his trade. He did this because he harbored a dream that one day he would make medicines himself. There is one incident that reinforced young Louis's dream. One day he was visiting the pharmacist when a man entered the blacksmith's shop next to the pharmacist. This man had been bitten by a mad dog. The blacksmith heated an iron rod until it was red hot and placed it on the area where the man was bitten. The man started screaming in pain. Louis simply stood there and watched the whole scene. This scene was engraved in the mind of young Louis and it was to play a major role in his future. Seeing the man's helplessness and weakness, he made a decision to do something about dog bites. He knew that there was little that he could do as a child. But one day he told himself, if I try, I am sure I can. This simple statement was to become a lifelong mantra for Lewis. With time, as Lewis grew to adulthood, his dream and promise did not die. So, he decided to develop a career in science. In this, he was helped by the best chemistry professors of his time. These professors molded Lewis. They played a critical role in transforming his interest in chemistry into love of chemistry. He completed his education and devoted his life to research. Pasteur made his name with his research on crystals. Crystals are transplant. That is, light can easily pass through them. The scientists of the time, including Pasteur, were puzzled by a specific kind of crystal which did not allow light to pass through it. Many people would have given up, but not Pasteur. He kept on trying again and again, until one day he succeeded. Ever so many people lose interest in science with the passage of time. Some lose interest after achieving a level of success. But for Pasteur, the story was different. He never lost interest. Rather, his childhood curiosity only multiplied. He was unable to accept things as they were. He wanted to know the why and how of everything. His discovery related to crystals brought him much fame. This one discovery firmly established him in the world of research. He started receiving job offers from the universities around the world. After careful consideration, he decided to work at the University of Lille in north of France. While teaching at the university, Pasteur never neglected his research. He devoted all his free time to conducting research and in seeking answers to the questions that plagued him. Lille was one of the wine-making centers of those days. Most of the livelihood of the town depended on this sector. But the wine very often got spoiled and this was a major source of concern. The earnings of the people were getting affected and they approached the new chemistry professor for a solution to their growing problem. Louis took up the challenge and gave assurance to the people that he would find a solution. 
he also requested the townsmen for a sample of the spoilt wine. The problem of food getting spoiled became the center point of Pasteur's life, although he was doing his best, but he had his doubts whether he would be successful in finding the solution. But in the time of doubt, he always remembered his childhood mantra, If I try, I can. This egged him on not to lose hope. Lois started his research on the samples of spoilt wine. He placed them under the microscope and found tiny rod-like creatures wriggling around in clusters. He placed spoilt milk under the microscope and found similar creatures there. The unspoilt milk and wine had only a few of these creatures. By conducting a number of experiments, he found that he could kill these germs by boiling the wine and milk to a certain temperature. This boiled wine and milk stayed fresher for a longer period of time. Lewis immediately went to his father and declared, I have done it. I have found a solution to the problem of wine getting spoiled. There were celebrations in Pasteur's household that night. With this one discovery, Pasteur saved the winemaking industry of France. This technique of killing germs by boiling liquids to a certain temperature came to be known as pasteurization, a term coined after his name. This technique is used even today for protecting perishable liquids. France suffered a huge defeat at the hands of Prussia in 1870. Prussia demanded money and the money was paid out of the profits of the wine industry that was saved by pasture. The Emperor Napoleon III and his Queen honored Pasteur by inviting him to be their guest at their palace. He also ordered the building of a special laboratory for Louis Pasteur for a sum of 30,000 francs. Louis's curiosity and interest did not die with his success. He went on to research the reasons behind diseases. He, along with others, believed in the germ theory, that is, that the diseases were caused by microorganisms. Some believed that the diseases were caused due to weakness or imbalance in the internal state of individuals. His long harbored dream to end the misery caused by dog bites was still on his mind, and so began his research in the area of human diseases. He took up the cause of rabies. Rabies was quite rare in human beings. It normally affected animals and was transferred to human beings through a dog bite. Pasteur was already aware of the old remedy for this, using red-hot iron in the hope of destroying the unknown cause of the disease, but the method rarely worked, and the disease almost always developed after a period of time. However, there was a major problem that he encountered. The treatment of the disease required animal and human testing. Lewis was not comfortable with either, but a treatment was required. So he did some animal testing and he was able to prevent rabies in dogs. One day, the parents of a nine-year-old boy came to him. The boy had been bitten by a rabied dog. Death was certain. They forced him to try out the treatment. With much reluctance, Lewis agreed. The vaccination turned out to be a